Wow. Um, what a win. What a win. I think I spoke to Paul Chesterton, our photographer, before uh, leaving the uh, press lounge downstairs to cover the game. And I said, oh, you know, a 2-0 defeat. You know, probably take that. Obviously, there was a lot of talk before the game about, well, I'll probably take a point, nil-nil, goalless draw. That'd be amazing. Um, and the, the reality is you go into games like this, 428 Norwich fans travel to games like this. Everyone at the beanback goes to games like this because you don't know. You don't know. This could be the one time when it, it comes off or, you know, you get lucky. But this this was a bit more than that. And I don't think you can be lucky three or four games on the trot. So um, Norwich won here 1-0 thanks to a gorgeous goal from James Madison, which shows so much quality in his strike. James Madison, by the way, a player that in my mind Norwich missed when he didn't play the last uh, game or two and actually is having a real impact this season. It's brilliant to watch for such a young man with so much potential and he's doing so much more than I thought he'd be capable of. It was a lovely swift break, uh, epitomising the way Norwich moved the ball quickly forward and really took advantage of, as Daniel Varka said, Middlesbrough's weaknesses in defence. And there weren't many of them. You looked at this side that they've got and Gary Monk has to work with this season with Armand, Armand Traore, who you know, should not be playing at this level, if he doesn't get this lot up, that's a managerial failure in my mind. So for Norwich to come here, take the lead, which again, the, the fact they're being so proactive early in games, solid, concentrated, getting a chance and taking it. If you take your first chance, you alter the entire dynamic of a game. They have done that recently. Again, brilliant goal. And the dynamic from the game from that point on was perfect because Norwich could sit in. They were solid, robust. They did actually, for the first time, give away a few opportunities. Britta Sombolonga had several chances just a few yards out for a player that Middlesbrough spent £15 million on, I think. Had to be doing something other than hitting the ball straight to Angus Gunn. Angus commanded his area so, so well. Um, there was just a little bit of sleepiness from, from Tim Closer in the first half, but I think it's more than seven hours. It's probably going on eight hours since Norwich conceded a goal in the league as far as I'm concerned it's a it's a club record I don't think they've been anywhere near it in the past hopefully someone will confirm that over the next few days I'll have a look myself if not and just going to that and I've said it before the organized structured side Norwich look on the pitch where everyone seems to know what they're doing really well so they're not really thinking about it compared to the shower we were seeing of disorganized open exposed naivety um, at Millwall and Villa uh, it's so stark and it's not really do it well I say it's not really different players it is of course some really key different players and the impact of Tom Tribal Tim Close's return Alex Tetty again tonight who was superb uh, it's, it's made a real major difference I don't think there's any shadowing and shying away from that so of course those things all come together but they all come together from Daniel Farker who has got those players out put them in the right positions found a system that works that doesn't compromise what he believes in and has coached them so that they look like that on the pitch and not just once or twice but now five times on the trot and of course the problems at home at Carrow Road are, are different to what they are away from home and they're definitely benefiting from the extra space they're getting away from home by the same token I think they can rectify what's going on at Carrow Road. And if they keep doing this away from home, they can they can have a really good season. And I'm not going to say what that is because I don't know. But they can certainly push on maybe higher than some people would have, would have, would have hoped for, no doubt. I'm going to save the last word for Cameron Jerome because he's had stick. I myself, during the transfer window, said that the guy looked like he couldn't work in this system that Daniel Farker wanted him to play. And yeah, you know, at times the ball didn't quite stick as well as it should have done when they needed the ball to be held up and, and City needed the pressure releasing. It didn't quite happen. The work rate he put in tonight and the, the way he moved things around and the way it enabled James Madison and Marley Watkins, who was so much better tonight, to, to play off and get forward when they could, which was sporadic. Brilliant. And um, I have no issue with Cameron Drone playing like that. Uh, at all and he, he really contributes lots of other plus points Nelson Oliveira came on Marco Stieperman came on for a bit so he, both of them are, are clearly not too badly off the only uh, one missing was Josh Murphy who I think was given a, a rest mentally as well as physically I think so uh, we'll see if we get to see him at, at Reading on Saturday when Nelson would should be available as well and that promises to be a very interesting game but uh, just one more little story uh, Daniel Farker after the game they had a huddle uh, the, the players and, and really wanted to soak that up on the pitch after the game and uh, just while we were waiting to the interviews uh, Daniel Farker just sat over there by the dugouts away on his own just just for a minute just collecting his thoughts not doing anything literally just sitting there 
thinking and I think the intensity of this and what's going on at the moment uh, you can't really blame him for having a, a couple of moments off can you so uh, yeah congratulations to 428 people who made the trip and saw uh, what may yet be uh, one of the best performances on the road all season as it is three points maybe it's starting to come together <laughs>